Welcome back everyone to the next installment of Chaos Child. We're going to try going for alternate paths. Let's go way back to save number two and load the thing up. Yeah. Alright, so this is where we can choose our path here. I'm still going to go for the positive version. And normally I would skip and make this the easiest thing in the world, but... If I, I think I can actually go through this without choosing anything. So when these options come up, I might go right through them. So I'm going to need to just mash X through this rather than go through the skip option. Alright, so here's our delusion trigger. So we got. This one, right? Yeah, I'm going through this. We're done with that. Adios, gracias. I guess because I've gone through enough delusions, which is kind of funny. But let's keep going. Okay, here we go. Now this is the silly tickle tickle scene, but we're going to, for our very first time, Go negative. This could be anything. Who knows? <laughs> oh yeah, we have to activate the delusion. There we go. Scary time. I guess I'll just leave the skip. Well, there's no point in putting it on now. The only sound in the dark room was their panting. It was enough to drive me crazy listening to it. And then... As I pretended to sleep, I felt someone's warm hand on my crotch. The... Hmm. And here I thought the positive delusions were going to go into this weird territory. <laughs> I almost jumped up and screamed, but there was a hand across my mouth? Uh... <laughs> and it's playing the creepy music, too. Who was it? Was it Kazuki or Serika? Serika was the one who'd been trying to touch Kazuki a moment ago. So, was it Serika? Was she touching my crotch? Was that the kind of person she was? Well, no, it's not, actually. We know that for a fact. No, no way. But I was a high school kid now. I couldn't stay a child forever. But, but could she really be so bold? If Ito found out about this, there'd be trouble. I wanted to say something, but I couldn't. I didn't resist. I just closed my eyes and let time pass. You know, I, I think I might flinch or something. I'd move out of the way. That, that's, that's... And then there's a hand on my mouth, though? The hands were still at my mouth and crotch. Th this is... Uncomfortable. Should I accept her bold invitation? This is going to be Ito. He's going to, like, he, he mistook me for one of them. But this was... Yep. <laughs> I heard panting in my ear. They must be Serika getting excited. But we can tell it's not with the name. This is weird because usually the game has... Woman, or man, or voice, but it's just... Shinji Ito. Serika was getting excited? Oh. Was this an option from the beginning? Whoa! Oh, that's gonna scare everybody. The nightmare was so horrible that I woke up screaming. Yeah, he's, like, holding us down. That's creepy as hell, dude. Yeah, let's throw the joke music around. Oh my god. Again, this is a trigger delusion. We're, like, 
Like, we were the ones who thought of that. I came to my senses and looked around. I realized that everyone else must have fallen asleep. They were all rubbing their eyes as if they were sleepy. Yeah. But was that really the case? Was I really dreaming about someone rubbing my crotch? God damn. I thought the negative delusions were going to go into violence, but this is straight up uncomfortable. I mean, I know violence is uncomfortable, but damn. Was it possible that Ito was just pretending to be asleep? No, he was asleep, dude. If he wanted to do something creepy, he would be under mind control and cut them into small pieces. <laughs> Imagining that made me shiver. I had to stop thinking about it. I had to pretend that it never happened. Huh? Okay, we're out. Whoa! Well, here we are again, back with our decision of what these targets had. This time I'm actually going to play it straight and say had special powers. Well, here we are with another trigger delusion. This was the one that started with, uh, if you check the backlog, I silently looked up to the building. The lights were on in the room at the end of the living room on the third floor, which meant she was awake. I know she would be, but still I couldn't help but sigh. That was the end of my last hope. After Sarah could answer the phone, she handed it to me without saying a word. I'm going to go negative. Maybe Kurosu was feeling worried too. So just as a reminder of how we got here, she told me to come home and in a flat emotionless voice. I couldn't make excuses. I'd be hoping she'd be asleep when I got back, but I realized there was never a chance of that. I didn't know for certain whether she wanted to talk about today. It might be about something else, so I guess it's about Kurosu, but maybe she was feeling worried too. I was already a witness to one death, and now today I've seen another, because now, now Watabe is dead. If they were all part of the same series of murders, then the killer hadn't been caught yet. So maybe I was in a pretty dangerous position. I was trying to find the killer, just like the police. It was possible that I'd gotten in too deep, and now the killer would come after me. And wait a minute. Kurosu was the vice president of the newspaper club and my sister, so maybe she was in danger too. It wasn't that long ago at all that she had been stabbed. They'd arrested the guy who had attacked her, but I'd heard that he was practically insane. What if the real killer had sent him to stab Kurosu? What if the person who found my phone saw Kurosu's photos and phone number and now was after her? I tried to tell myself that as I went inside the house. But when I knocked on Kurosu's door, there was no answer. Oh god, so is this what I was going to be afraid of the first time? I thought she might be asleep and tried to open the door, but it was locked from the inside. I'd seen the lights on from outside, so maybe she was sleeping with them on. Oh god, the music. I didn't see Dad, Yui, or Yuto anywhere. The house was always so lively, but now it seemed eerily quiet. Why wasn't there anyone here? Where had they gone? Did they go to get food and leave Kurzu here? But I looked at the time, and normally this would have been when Dad was closing up the hospital. The front door, that is, the door to the clinic itself, was still unlocked. All the lights were still on. Masaka. No. I suddenly had a horrible thought, and I started thinking of even worse things. I decided to try calling Kurosu's cell phone from the line in the house. I heard the sound of a ringtone. It was coming from Kurosu's room. She was asleep after all. Why would she call me here and then go to sleep? What the heck was she thinking? Oh my god. Oi, Kurosu! That was strange. I was pounding on the door and there was no response from inside. I had a bad premonition. Remember, whatever happens, it's not real. This is not a branching path to the point where it will alter the actual plot. It'll get us to a different ending because we're choosing different options, but this is not real. There was no way. It wasn't possible, right? I tried to tell myself that everything was fine, but it wasn't working. I decided to kick down her door. Just going right to that. I... Jeez. I ran inside the room and gasped at what I saw. Oh, get ready. Oh, no. The whole room was covered in red, 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 red. The walls, the bed, the carpets, the desk, the stuffed animals. The room was covered in bright red blood everywhere you looked. 
The smell of blood was strong enough that I almost threw up, and I couldn't bring myself to take another step. Whose blood was this? I know we're not seeing anything with these visuals, but that's terrifying. There was no sign of Kurosu in the room. She was gone. Not only were Dad, Yui, and Yuto missing, but so was Kurosu. She disappeared, leaving behind all this blood. Leaving behind her smartphone. She disappeared without a trace. The door was locked from the inside. Even the windows were locked. The words, missing persons case flashed through my mind, but I knew it was much worse than that. I fell to my knees and clasped my head in my hands. I knew that Dad, Yui, Yuto, and Kurosu too were never coming back. Ugh. Ugh. That's some vision. That was just a daydream, but I couldn't say for sure that it wouldn't happen. Wow. The position I was in was just that dangerous. When I went inside, she was sitting on the bed waiting for me. Oh, okay, we're good. We're good. We're good. Well, we have gone through a lot. We snuck into the hospital, we went with Kunosato, and now we're back at her apartment, and now we have another delusion. I looked over. There's not much to see here. Just why had Kay brought us to her room? I thought I remember she saying she decided if she could use us later. And then I looked over. Well, we're going negative, everybody. Let's see how horrible this gets. Miyashiro. Here's our trigger on. Huh? Kunosato brought it up, and I was trying my hardest to ignore it. Yeah, <laughs> Remember that sword on her ceiling? Of course we know it's fake now, but we don't know at this point in the game. I tried my best to laugh and avoid looking at it. Come on, don't make me talk about this with you. I just knew it was going to end badly. But Kunosato took up the blade with a calm look on her face. She swung it around and assumed a fighting stance. Oh yeah, that's right! The goofy version of this was... It was an anime fight, and they had crazy names, like I'm... Kaze Weasel or whatever, and Kunosato's like, ah, oh, it's Miyashiro, only you can stop the villain or whatever, so we'll see what this turns into. Her moves were graceful and beautiful. For a moment, I fell in love. The sword was the perfect weapon for her. I didn't know why, but that's how it seemed. She swung the sword right in front of my eyes. I could hear... Oof. I could hear the sound of it cutting through the wind. No. I could see some of my bangs falling to the ground. Whoa! It was incredibly sharp. If it touched me, it would slice me in half. It would tear me apart. I gulped. To kill you. Oh no! Huh? <laughs> It's still goofy, but this is going to get violent. お前は今、渋谷で進行中の極秘プロジェクトについて知ってしまった。ゆえに、生かしてはおけないんだ。許せ。Oh no. took a step forward, moving as if she were about to begin a dance. It only took an instant. Oh no! Ah! A spurt of blood burst from Zerika's chest and she fell over. What just happened? I hadn't even seen Kunosato swing her sword. <laughs> this is brutal. I love that she's speaking in cliches now. Wow! That visual transition, he's just gone in a flash. Ito screamed and fell, blood pouring from his chest. I still couldn't see it. 
The sword moved so fast. This was the power of the super agent. The Azure Swordsman! Kunosato turned toward me. I only had a few seconds left to live, but for some reason, as she held the blade that killed Saraka and Ito, Kunosato seemed so beautiful. Those are the last things that Kunosato said to me. <laughs> then everything went black. Maybe it was some small mercy of hers that I didn't feel any pain. Wow, <laughs> that's pretty good. <laughs> huh? Wait, what? You were in your last year of high school, what the hell are you thinking? Sure, any Japanese boy who grew up on manga could fantasize about something like that, but it was all tropes and cliches. If it had gotten launched in a magazine, it would have been cancelled after ten weeks. I blamed the sword that was just sitting there in the corner. Any boy who saw that sword would remember his dark history. Anyway, this was no time to be thinking about that sword. As I sat there fantasizing, Kunosato was tearing apart Ito's hopes and dreams. He was having a bad time. And we're done. Alright. Uh, this is strange. We're at the part where we were attacked by the pyromaniac, but even though I don't have a choice in the matter, this is reading differently. It's stopping me here. This is new content, so it looks like my decisions earlier have made a difference here. Let's get out of here, she's saying. <laughs> While I hesitated, Aramura ran past the woman toward the street. The woman slowly stood up. I ran after Aimura before the woman could get up. Yeah, this is after we reflected her power briefly. I ran down many different alleyways and turned on several corners. I didn't even know where I was anymore. I just kept running, sure that if I turned back, that woman would be behind me. I ran. And ran. And ran. And then... Oh? It just... True World? That's not even a chapter name. What a number? What? <laughs> Is this just a new chapter then? Where's Arimara? Where did Arimara go? How could she run away and leave me behind? Yet yeah, this is different. What the hell? This is like a secret chapter. Damn it. And what the hell is wrong with that woman? Why did we, I mean, me, have to go through this? Was it because I'd been investigating the case? Then maybe... Maybe I should have listened to Arimura's warning. Maybe I should have dropped the case right then and there. But back then, I never thought the killer would come after me. And I wasn't trying to catch them. I just thought it was interesting. We were only following the case because it was fun. Was that just how the real world worked? It's how Sakuma works. I hadn't done anything wrong. I'd just been doing this for fun. Which, okay, I, I know it's a little late for me to be mentioning this. But considering how messed up Sakuma is, he wasn't even going to kill his family. He had no plans to do that. But then Sarika told him to do it, and he was like, oh, damn, cool, okay. That's messed up. Was that enough to justify killing me? If she killed me, I would die. Wow, that's a meme. People die when they are killed. If I died, I'd cease to exist. I'd disappear. I'd be gone. I wouldn't be able to see anything, hear anything, say anything, eat anything. Everyone would make a fuss at first, maybe someone would cry, but they wouldn't really mean it, and they wouldn't do it for long. Before long, they'd all forget about me. Kursu, Ito, Kazuki, and Serika. 
I'd be all alone. In an empty, dark world. No one would remember me. No. No, 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 no. Anything but that. I... I... I heard a noise in front of me. Footsteps. Did she get ahead of me somehow? Could I do it again if I had to? The reflecting, that is. The way I dodged those flames, if that was what Arimura said was my power. But how? I knew I had to bring out that sword thing again, but I didn't know how to do it. It wasn't working. I'd been able to do it before because I wasn't thinking about it, but when I tried to do it now, the panic went out. And not only could I not use my powers, I couldn't even see the sword anymore. The footsteps kept getting closer. It was no good. I'd have to run. It was all I could do now. My minds knew I had to run, but my body wouldn't obey. My legs went numb and my heartbeat was deafening. The sweat pouring down my brow got into my eyes and I didn't even know where I was running anymore. The footsteps from behind got gradually closer. They were almost on top of me. Right around that corner. So close. And look. She's right there. I'm her. I flailed my arms and legs out of my attacker, who screamed in a surprisingly cute voice. <laughs> ね。どうして私と同じ方向に逃げてきちゃうんですかそんなことしたら追っかけて来られちゃうかもしれないじゃないですかThat's pretty funny. ちょっと待て。もしかしてお前、僕を大取りにするつもりだったのか別に最初からそういうつもりってわけじゃないです。ただ、結果的にそうなったってだけっす。Why you? 怪しいもんだな。そんなこと言って本当は。Arimura suddenly put her hand across my mouth before I could say another word. I was about to complain, but when I saw the look on her face, I shut up and listened. <laughs> there was no doubt about it. This sound... This time it really was that woman. Oh, man. Oh, she just goes for it. There was an explosion and a shockwave in the air struck me in the face. I could smell something burning within the black smoke that covered my vision. And beyond it... The woman with the empty eyes. I knew that. I knew that, but what was I supposed to do? I forced my shaking legs to turn toward the woman. Her eyes were still empty as she stared at me. I couldn't sense anything in them at all. I couldn't tell what she was thinking or why she was doing this. But I could tell that her eyes were looking at me. She was after me. Please. Just one more time. Just one more time. Focus. Focus. Give me power. Senpai. Yeah. Senpai. Maybe things weren't that easy after all. Maybe things weren't that easy after all. 
ですよそんなの<laughs> I could see the woman raising her hand slowly out of the corner of my eye. This was not good. At this distance, if I got hit with those flames, it was going to be really, really hot. No, hotter than hot. I could burn to death. Even if I didn't die, I'd be badly burned. There was no way I'd be okay. I needed to find some way to run. But how? A spiral of orange light was forming in the woman's hand. Oh... Did this mean I was going to die? Was I going to die now? Did dying always feel so unreal? The woman was right on top of us now. A massive whirlpool of flame had formed around her hands. And then she slowly turned her hands toward us. And then there was a sudden strange sound as the flames flowed backward and struck her in the face. It wasn't me, was it? She flailed back and fell to her knees. I looked behind me and saw that Arimura was holding a can of hairspray. Oh, wow! Arimura might not have expected it to do much, but it worked better than she could have possibly imagined. Arimura was staring in shock at what had just happened. But there wasn't time for that. The woman was slowly starting to look up at us. Arimura's counterattack had made her angry. If she came after us again, we'd be dead. Before that happened... I picked up the spray can at my feet and flung it at our attacker, then grabbed Arimura by the hand and ran toward the strange woman. Really? She must not have expected that, because fortunately we didn't hear any footsteps right away. For now, we needed to lose her and get somewhere safe where we could hide. But the only place we could hide around here was there. But if she found that place... No, now wasn't the time to worry about that. I'd have to chance it. Hey, what happened to all that courage you had a moment ago? Damn it, did she have to talk back at a time like this? But Aramura was right. My heart was pounding so loud I thought it might burst. In manga and anime, you always gain incredible stamina in situations like this. Evidently, that didn't really happen, though. It was impossible for a human being to surpass their limits. Maybe I should have exercised more. Obviously, it was too late for that. Still, that didn't mean I could give up. I didn't have the strength left to answer her question. We just had to keep going. Even a big city like Shibuya had lots of tiny overlapping little alleyways off the main streets, and this area was my home, which meant I had the advantage. And it wouldn't be long before... I was right. I could hear sirens. Even in an alleyway, someone would have heard all that noise. If the police were here, that woman would have bigger problems than trying to track us down. I lowered my body to the ground and headed further into the darkness. At this point, I'd be able to find my way there blindfolded. Yeah, it's my trailer. <sighs> we listened carefully to the sounds around us as we caught our breaths. Breaths? If we heard our footsteps, we'd recognize them immediately. 
We could hear the sound of police sirens in the distance. I hoped that the police would catch her and take her away. We just stood there, frozen in prayer as we waited for time to pass. Five minutes. Then ten. It wasn't long at all, but it felt like an eternity. I took a deep breath. All the tension drained from my body and I slowly sat on the ground. Aramar asked. Anyway, that woman. Was she the one behind the murders? Then what was her connection to the facility under the hospital? Or was she acting on her own? There still wasn't enough information to tell. あの、先輩。何もうそろそろいいんじゃないかと。だからもう大丈夫だってさっき言ったじゃないか。いえ、そういうことではなくてですね。その手を手。Oh, I've been holding her hand the entire time for 10 minutes. ずっと握ったままなので。that's kind of funny. We weren't even thinking about it. Oh. I'd been so desperate to get away from that woman that I hadn't realized it, but it looked like I'd been holding Aramara's hand the whole time. And it wasn't just her hand. She and I were incredibly close. <laughs> That's how normal people react. I would have been just like, oh, sorry. <laughs> I quickly jumped back. That was like a violent reaction. <laughs> I know that's her style of humor, but could we not? Yeah, plus, she would know. She's obviously trolling us. Like, she could tell if we're telling the truth. Uh, fair. Although, to be fair again, we're not really used to being around anyone. I'm a normal. The term didn't seem to mean anything to her. A happy, normal life, but like, from what we've seen, Miyashiro's entire life is overcompensating. Or at least trying to live up to the reputation he feels he deserves. That's true, she doesn't realize this is our home and this is our bed three feet from her. This is awkward. Aramara had stood up and started to look around the dark room. Oh, she did not find her magazines. <laughs> Destroy my home. I decided it was probably safe now and turn on the lights. Now that she could see, Aramura was looking around the room in surprise. She seemed a lot less on edge than usual, probably because she was pretty sure the woman wasn't going to come after us anymore. I opened up the fridge and took out two plastic bottles, then I handed one to her. She opened the bottle and took a big swig of it. Thank you. 
<laughs> Arimura ignored me, even though I was in the middle of my lecture, and grimaced with her mouth still full of mountain view. Evidently, she didn't like it. This is so obnoxious. <laughs> so camping Oh my god. Miyashiro's existence is well actually. This is the worst. ちなみに一言にキャンピングカーと言っても専用の車体を利用したフルコンとかバンやボックスカーの内部を改装して居住空間を作ったバンコンなどいろいろあってこの家の場合はどうして先輩はこんな家に住んでるんですか? you please let me finish? <笑>宮城先輩って黒先輩と兄弟っていうか確か弟さんでしたよね施設も I would have preferred that she didn't ask any more questions about that. If she asked, I'd have to tell her about what happened. Huh? なんで僕だけここで暮らしてるのかとか。聞きませんよ。だって先輩聞かれたくないでしょ。どうしてそう思う。あ、もしかして。Maybe then how did she know? That is fair enough, but also we're visibly uncomfortable at this point, so it's not a reach. Yeah, it's very easy with Miyashiro. さあ、どうでしょう。はははは。冗談を言ってもらっちゃ困るな。僕の思考は複雑で、ちょっとやそっとじゃ思考を読むなんてできないはずだ。Oh, that's funny. Because I, I, I was going to say, it's clearly wrong, but it wasn't a lie because we believed it. <laughs> That's great. Maybe it was easy to tell what I was thinking. Again, she can't call me out for being wrong, but she can call me out for lying, so here's the moment. Do I believe that I know how to talk to a girl? Oh no, she did find them. Well, that's a game over. Arimura picked up one of the magazines scattered at her feet. Cool cat press. Oh no! Wait a minute, Miyashiro. Is this from several decades ago? Oh god. This oof, this is the worst ending yet. I quickly reached out to grab it, but she dodged me easily. Oh, this sucks. <laughs> Oh. 
why is this only one floor? Why couldn't we be on the 10th floor so I could just jump out the window right now? I reached out my hand again to grab the magazine from her. But I'd run so far and was so exhausted that even that was enough to throw me off balance. And as a result... Oh, come on. We're not going to fall into her chest, are we? We're not going to do one of these and ruin this otherwise hysterical moment. Oh, no! Why was she looking at me that way? Oh, dear. Ooh, hmm. Well, I'll tell you what I will do. Because, as it turns out, this is where we're going to make ourselves another branching path. I can save over save file 4 now. That was the end of the, the first file. We're good. So, I'll do this. And we'll see True World. Man, it's it's Hinae chapter, right? It's not chapter 4, it's her chapter. Huh. But we'll go ahead and see where this takes us, because this is a choice we haven't seen before. We can go positive or negative. But for now, in this incredibly awkward moment... It is time to stop the installment. Well, we certainly made a lot of progress today, didn't we? We loaded an old save, got a very uncomfortable negative delusion, followed by more of what I had expected from negative delusions, and we opened a new chapter! The Hanei Aramura chapter! It's not even numbered, we're going in a completely different direction now. So get ready for new paths and new endings. Until next time, everyone.